Hi everyone and welcome to our second Tech Tree Rundown. Today we're looking at the Chinese. Chinese are considered a 3 star difficulty, likely because of the dynasty system and how their unique units work within that. They get very good gunpowder units and they're apparently very good at expansion, I expect that's related to the bonuses they get to building. The Chinese can shift their focus across the ages, deploying many unique units and building rapidly. Enemies must continually adapt if they want to keep up. Great dynasties construct both landmarks in an age to start a dynasty, with unique bonuses, buildings and units. So when you age up with a normal civilization, you get a choice of two and you build one of them and the other one becomes unavailable. With the Chinese you can build both the landmarks, obviously that costs you double what it costs to age up so it's going to affect your economy, but it will also give you access to a particular dynasty, which will give you access to some unique units and we'll talk about those as we go through the tech tree. You get fire medicine, which immediately gains the Chinese, the chemistry technology in the imperial age. So they don't have to research that, it saves you a bit of gold. Unique units, you get the Zhong Nu, which is a repeat across bowmen, effective against light units. The Fire Lancer, a light cavalry unit, effective against buildings, basically it's got a hand cannon on the end of it. You get the Grenadier, which throws grenades capable of doing AoE damage. And the Nest of Bees, which fire a barrage of rockets, doing area of effect damage. You also get another unique unit, but it's a support unit, so it's not listed here. Your general civilization bonuses, villages construct defenses 50% faster, and all other buildings 100% faster. I believe that includes the landmarks, so that's a big bonus. Enter a dynasty by building both landmarks from an age providing access to special bonuses. Chemistry technology is gained for free when advancing to the imperial age, and docks work 20% faster. Nice bonus if you're on a water map, though I would still prefer to go with the French for their early hulk, for that little bit of early game control of the waterways. Let's now have a look through the tech tree. Starting with the Dark Age, you get the Zhang Dynasty. This gives all your scouts a 30% line of sight, and you just get that at the start, you don't have to do anything. Then you get your town center. Villager, scout, what you get here as a bonus is a support unit I referred to, and this is the Imperial Official. This is an economic support unit with no combat capability. It will automatically gather gold from buildings around the town center. It can also be tasked with improving a building's efficiency. But you can only have four of these at once, if it's the same as the beta. I have not yet played them properly in this version of the game. Textiles, again, just your standard upgrade. Then you get your house, the mill, as with all the other sides, you just get your normal upgrades, survival techniques, wheelbarrow, professional scouts, and your food gathering upgrades. Lumber camp, once again, forestry, and your standard wood gathering upgrades. And the mining camp, again, your standard mining upgrades. You also get your farm, and then we move on to the barracks. Here we have the Spearman in the Dark Age, which you can rank up all the way to Elite in the Imperial Age. You also get the unique unit, the Palace Guard. The Palace Guard is the Chinese version of the Man-at-Arms. However, rather than a sword and shield, they carry a two-handed pike, I suppose, with a moon blade on the end. So slightly different to a Man-at-Arms, but filling the same role of heavy armor. You also get the unique upgrade, the Battle Hardened upgrade, which increases the health of Palace Guards by 30 in the Imperial Age. You are waiting a little while to get those Men at Arms because you don't get them till the Castle Age, but equally you can build 100% faster, so you're going to want to tech up quite quickly with the Chinese probably. Then you have the Dock, which you get the Fishing Boat and Transport Ship in the Dark Age, your Trade Ship and Junk in the Feudal Age, then you get your war junk with a ballista in the castle age and your explosive junk. Again, not too many players use these. And then you get the Bao Chun, which is the warship with all the cannons. Upgrades wise, you get extended lines and drift nets, the usual fishing upgrades. You get a unique technology here for the Chinese, the extra hammocks. Junks of the archer ship type gain additional crew, allowing them to fire two more arrows in each volley. Obviously you don't get this till the castle age, It'd be nice perhaps if that was there in the feudal age to back up the ships that you're actually going to be building then. Then you get your navigator lookout, the usual upgrades in the castle age. 
Jumping back to the feudal age, because it's in a funny order, you get your additional sales technology to increase all the movement speed by 15%. Then you get your extra ballista in the castle age, and then finally your chaser cannons and explosives upgrade in the imperial age. Nothing too special there except the hammocks. You get your palisade wall, gate and outpost. Nice thing for the Chinese here, rather than getting arrow slits, you get hand cannon slits. So that should be doing a little bit more damage than arrows. You also get fortify outposts and then have the choice to put a spring hold emplacement or a cannon emplacement on that tower. Now moving on to the Dark Age landmarks. The first you have the Imperial Academy, which allows nearby buildings to generate 100% tax gold. This is using the influence system, and this comes back to needing to build your base in a certain way. You will want to put buildings that are going to be used frequently, either that being resource gathering buildings or production buildings around this, to get the most out of it. You also get the unique upgrade here, the Imperial Examinations, which increases the maximum amount of gold carried by Imperial officials from 20 to 40. The second unique landmark is the Barbican of the Sun. This fires long range hand cannon and adds arrow slits while garrisoned. It offers vision into stealthed forests. This can be a very good early game defensive building depending on the map you're on and careful placement. Also bear in mind that with the bonus to Chinese building, you could certainly build this somewhere near the enemy base to deny them some kind of resources. I've seen it used in the beta in the middle of the map, for example, to stop people getting resources on King of the Hill. If you build both of those landmarks, you get access to the Feudal Age Song Dynasty. The Song Dynasty villager production time is reduced by 35%. You get the unique building in the village and the unique unit, the Zong Nu or the Repeater Cross Bowman. Later dynasties remove these bonuses. This is something you need to be aware of with the Chinese when you go up through the dynasties, you lose access to what you previously had. You will definitely lose access to the buildings. You will definitely lose access to the villager production time bonus. And you will temporarily, at least, lose your access to the Zong Nu. It is possible to get access to the unit again. So the village is a unique building to the Chinese, which increases the maximum population by 40. It only costs 100 wood, and it is well worth building a couple of these. Then, obviously, you get your town center. Nothing special there, just the same units. However, I will note that there is no imperial official listed here, which to me is still a bug in this tech tree. Pretty sure that was the same in the beta as well. I need to message them about that because they need to be aware it needs updating. Then you get access to the market, which just has your trader. And then obviously you have the blacksmith. Nothing too special here. You get your melee attack, ranged attack, melee defense and ranged defense. Siege engineering, which gets you access to towers and battering rams. And obviously the military academy which reduces the time it takes to produce infantry, cavalry, siege, and transport units by 25%. Nothing special there. You get your battery ram and siege tower, as discussed. Then you get your archery range, and this is where we start talking about a couple of special units. So, in the feudal age, you get access to the archer, and presuming you have built both of the buildings, you also get access to the Zung Nu. This is a rapid-fire archer. It's sort of a cross between a crossbow and an archer, and you can keep access to this if you never change dynasty or if you build both buildings or one of the buildings in particular in the castle age to go to the imperial age but we'll discuss that when we get there you then get your crossbowman in the castle age you get your hand cannoneer in the imperial age and obviously depending on what you build you get access to the grenadier of course you also have your stable in the feudal age which gets you access to the scout and the horseman. You then get lancers in the castle age and also the fire lancer, assuming you upgrade and build both of your landmarks. The fire lancer is an unarmored cavalry unit wielding an explosive tipped lance for impressive charge attacks. Obviously, again, you would technically lose access to this if you don't build a certain building, but you can keep access to it in the Imperial Age if you so wish. 
stone walls, stone wall gate and stone wall towers, all available as standard. Now we move on to the feudal age landmarks. First you have the astronomical clock tower, which acts as a siege workshop and produces siege engines with plus 50% health. Pretty much standard, spring old, nest of bees, counterweight trebuchet and the clock tower bombard. The only difference is obviously they specifically are called the clock tower, spring old, etc. They're all standard in their damage, they just get that extra health bonus. The second landmark is the Imperial Palace. It has a large site radius and activated to view location of enemy villages for 10 seconds. Basically, it has a little activatable ability when you select it that will reveal the enemy villages across the entire map. If you build both of these, you get access to the Yuan Dynasty. Villages, officials and military units gain plus 15% speed. Unique building, the granary, and unique unit, the fire lancer. Later dynasties remove these bonuses. I keep saying that because you need to remember this. The granary is a unique economy building. Villagers can drop off food at this building. It improves the farm gather rate of nearby villagers by plus 15%, and it stacks with other granaries. It generates tax each time a resource is dropped off. You can build multiple granaries around the same farm to get a bonus. However, they're a funny size compared to the farms. So when you're planning your base building, it's not always the most efficient way to do it, perhaps. You also get access to your keep, which has your usual upgrades, the spring old emplacement, cannon emplacement, imperial age, boiling oil. You also get access to unique Chinese technology, extra materials. Stonewall towers and outposts repair nearby stone walls. A single section is repaired at a time for plus 20 health per second. Moving on to the monastery, you get access to your standard monk, herbal medicine, piety, and teddy barns. Then the siege workshop. You get a spring old, your unique nest of bees, your counterweight trebuchet, greased axles available in the castle age, you get access to the bombard in the imperial age, along with your other upgrades. Your unique upgrades available here are reload drills, which reduces the reload time of bombards by 33%. You get reusable barrels, which reduces the cost of the nest of bees by 25%. And you get access to pyrotechnics, which increases the range of gunpowder units by 20%. Some very nice gunpowder bonuses for the Chinese there. Then, your final two unique landmark buildings. The first is the Great Wall Gatehouse. It must be built over a stone wall. It increases the health of stone walls and gates by 100%, and nearby troops on walls deal 50% damage. So, very good to have at the front access point to your base. However, bear in mind that it is a landmark, so if it is destroyed, it counts towards that victory. Then you also get the Spirit Way. All buildings can create previously achieved dynasty units. So this is what I was referring to when I said you will be able to get access to the units at a later time. So building the Spirit Way will give you access to the Zong Nu, the Fire Lancer, and also, if you build both of these landmarks, the Grenadier. So you don't lose access to those units necessarily if you build the Spirit Way. However, you have to have achieved the previous dynasties as well. So it's only if you previously had access to them. If you haven't built all of the landmarks, then you will not get access to the relevant unit. Buildings near this landmark produce dynasty units at minus 30% cost. Again, with the Chinese, we're talking about this influence system. You want to be building this somewhere near your production. So where you have all your barracks, where you have all your archery ranges, you need to be building it somewhere near those. Then you get the Ming Dynasty in the Imperial Age. This is if you build both the Great Wall and the Spirit Way. Military units gain plus 10% health. You get the unique building, the Pagoda, and the unique unit, the Grenadier. The Pagoda is a building which you can place a relic in, and it generates 50 food, wood, gold, and stone every 30 seconds, and it also generates tax over time. 
So a very good building to build. It's not too expensive. If you have access to relics, it's going to give you a constant source of income at the late game. Then you get access to the university in the Imperial Age. Chemistry you get automatically. So although it's listed there, that automatically researches as soon as you get to the Imperial Age. You get the geometry, biology, incendiary arrows, court architects. Ancient techniques is a unique technology to the Chinese and increases the gather rate of villages by plus 5% for each dynasty achieved. So I assume that means that you get it automatically at 5% if you've achieved the very first dynasty, which you start with in the game anyway, and then up to a maximum of 20% if you've done the following three. You also get your usual elite army tactics. And then your wonder is the enclave of the emperor. So compared to the English, the Chinese are a wee bit more complex mainly for their dynasty system and the fact that all of their units are a bit here, there and everywhere depending on the dynasty upgrades you do. Also, you have this other aspect of gold gathering from the Imperial official. Very helpful if you're on a map with not a lot of gold. Also gives the Chinese quite a significant bonus in gold gathering. Well, that's our rundown of the Chinese tech tree. Please do like, share and subscribe and I will see you all soon for the French Tech Tree.